Good afternoon all. A V2L cable, which I bought on AliExpress. No, not on AliExpress. It was actually on Alibaba.com um, some time ago, before I knew the details of the vehicle to load cable for my MG ZS EV. And I never used this because while it was in transit, and it took quite a long time to get to me, we found the details of the resistor that you need on the PP pin 470 ohms. Now this one is actually a 2K, so this would never have worked um, unless I took it apart and changed the resistor. And that's kind of what I'm doing now. I'm looking at it, seeing how it's built. Uh, I'm gonna have to change that resistor from 2K to 470 ohms, because that's what the MG cars use. So I've taken this apart and it wasn't easy. Um, I'll show you why. So this type two connector, which appears to be really a sealed hollow tube. Um, there is a seam line down there, but I think it might be ultrasonically welded. And in fact, uh, this piece, which takes the pins, is a push fit in there. And it's a very tight push fit. Oh, it's all falling off my desk. Um, it had this rubber washer, which is now a very odd shape. I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to reuse that in any meaningful way. So you can see on here there are two kind of molded um, lugs. Now they don't press in or anything, they're just there and they fit into these little uh, recesses in here. But it's all very tight. I can't uh, do it now because uh, I've got all these wires dangling out. I'm going to cut all these because um, I want to completely rewire this. New resistor, new cable knew everything. So in fact, what I might do now is cut these wires uh, so that I can uh, demonstrate the various pieces of this in a rather better way. So let's cut live, neutral, uh, earth. These cutters have gone a bit bad at the tip. They don't cut terribly well. Uh, right, all these pins are falling out. That is the resistor and they've done it in an odd way. They did it so that re the resistor was sort of buried in that hole. Now I don't know whether this is particularly heat transmissive plastic. Um, I don't think that resistor gets particularly hot. I suppose it's quite a neat place to put it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's where the resistor was. Now that goes to oddly um, a thermal cutout, which is just poked into one of the unused lives because these connectors have seven pins, uh, two control signals, earth, neutral, live, and two more lives for live uh, live one, live two, live three, which are for three phase uh, AC. Now my car doesn't output, uh, doesn't take three phase in, it doesn't put three phase out, so I'll never use that. And in fact, the pins aren't fitted. Um, so let's, uh, yes, yeah, so it goes through this um, thermal cutout, which is just pus pushed into one of the unused holes that connects uh, PP, proximity pilot, through that resistor, through the thermal uh, cutout to earth, or what they call PE, protective earth. So on the basis that I might reuse that thermal cutout, I'll cut that close to the connector as possible. So that's the earth pin, uh, that's the thermal cutout. I'll cut this resistor because I'm not reusing this resistor. And that's the shell which screws into here and slides in to hold all the pins in. Uh, and then three screws go into there so it's fully self-contained. And then this thing, oh, I can get this wire out now. Yes, this assembly, perhaps I'll take that out, um, pushes into here. And it is a very, very tight fit. I think courtesy of those two um, little raised bumps either side, that makes it a very tight fit. Um, I'm not even sure whether that would need a seal. I don't think I'd ever use this overnight, although I might use it in the rain, but that is really very tight. And you can see from all the destruction around here um, that it took quite a bit of effort to work that out. 
broken a small screwdriver in the process. But yeah, that's a, a tight interference fit in this handle. And then on this cable, we've got uh, various clamps. There's a clamp thing there. There's a rubber uh, thing there, which fits into the smaller end of the type two plug. Uh, there's another ring which clamps up against that ring. Some screws go in there. There's the bung, um, which you put over the end of the connector to keep the water out. And then they also came up with this. They've packed out um, this grommet with a piece of wire sleeving. It looks like it is. Yes, it is. It's uh, some sleeving from, um, uh, I think, a uh, car charger cable, possibly three phase, because it looks like there's more than just the three large wires in there. I think there are five in there, uh, po possibly plus the two small control wires. And then they've tipped hot glue into the end of the bung and packed it out with bits of cut off wire, presumably to use a bit less hot glue. And then they've actually painted the or sharpied the hot glue. So it looks black at the end. I mean, it's, it's an interesting uh, idea. The seller was very good, very helpful. Um, was very keen to make sure I got the right uh, end for UK plugs. This is a proper one as well, not uh, some sort of multi uh, plug type with switches. Um, but it was expensive. This was about a hundred pounds, $135 it was. Um, but at the time I knew nothing about how V2L worked and I just wanted to have a look inside. But as I say, while this thing was in transit, all the details emerged. And so when this arrived, I didn't really need it. But now I wanna repurpose it and make it into another V2L cable. Now the high current connectors, which are live, neutral and earth, have all been crimped with a high pressure uh, crimper, but they've also been soldered, which is a bit odd. And I'm just wondering whether they repurposed an old connector that had previously been crimped and then just soldered these wires in. So I'm very interested to see whether um, these wires are actually crimped or whether they're just dipped into a bit of solder on the end of these pre-crimped connectors uh, to get these heated up enough to get those wires out. I'm going to have to get them very hot, which means taking these little uh, seals off. Otherwise they're going to burn. Now for a charging cable, you absolutely would not solder these high current connectors. You'd crimp them. Um, but for a V2L cable where you know the current's going to be limited, uh, soldering is probably okay. And since this is me and my cable and no one else will ever use it, I'm going to solder it and uh, just see how we get on. But the first thing I want to do is try and unsolder uh, what's already in there and see whether these wires were actually crimped in or whether they've just been soldered into previously used connectors. So I'm just warming up the hot uh, Ryobi iron, the one that gets to 480 degrees. Too hot for a sponge, so I use the shards of metal probably just steel coated in a orangey color so that it looks like uh, brass <laughs> probably isn't brass right let's see if we can get some heat on here is it iron hot yeah it is a hot just some, lay some heat down on here and see if i can start to melt the pile of solder and see if this comes out there's a lot of crackling so there must be a lot of flux on here. Is this going to come out or has it actually been crimped in? Uh, possibly crimped because that isn't pulling out. So yeah, maybe they did crimp and then solder. I'm not quite sure why they would do that. This is uh, lead free solder. It's just not flowing. Horrible stuff. But it's the law, so you've got to use it. Not when you're just doing a project in your own home, though. You can uh, use the old leaded solder. But yeah, that's just not wetting or flowing at all. It's horrible stuff. Right, can I pull this out of its crimp? Uh, if I rotate it around these pliers. Oh, it's all not being held very well by this crock clip. And that's going to be hot now, isn't it? 
Well, it's not that hot. Yeah, it's difficult to apply the heat and apply the force and everything all at the same time. Yeah, so I think that probably was crimped because there's enough length of wire, which I have managed to rotate. can do it on camera because it's just too difficult. Rotate under heat and pull it out of the crimp. So if these fairly thin wires were crimped into these connectors, uh, it wasn't a very good job. And I can just understand why they soldered on top of that. I'm just going to, with my new wire, I'm just going to solder them and accept that um, I'm going to be putting... Well, I'm only going to run this thing up to two kilowatts, so I'm only going to be putting eight amps uh, through these connectors. Solder should be adequate. Right, in the end, it proved too difficult to pull the wires out with these hot. And uh, so in the end, I've just drilled them out, filled them with solder, drilled them back out again with a three mil drill. Um, I've got a reasonable depth in there, probably four or five millimeters uh, so that I can solder my new wires in. Yes, I mean, you're not meant to reuse crimp connectors, but I think I can probably get away with it. 